Hi, this is Don, and I want to go over a problem that has given a number of you difficulty, and a number of you have asked questions as to why technology gives you a different answer than my stat lab uh, suggests is the correct answer. Um, I will show you how to do this using both Excel and uh, StatCrunch because I think it's important for you to, uh, if you haven't tried StatCrunch, to uh, give it a try for some of these problems. Of course, if, if you are good with Excel, and if you plan on going on to uh, quantitative analysis, business 430, or getting a master's degree, then learning to do this with uh, Excel uh, will give you some skills that will be transferable. And of course, you can get access to StatCrunch even after you, you know, finish this course and if you want to use it for your stats, uh, StatCrunch is a, is a good tool to get quick answers and save you some time. So let's see how to do it um, with, with uh, both the long way using Excel and using Excel functions as well as StatCrunch. The problem is that we're given a binomial uh, distribution here and I wish I could see that a little bit better. It's very small, but it won't let me expand it. And it has highlighted um, three areas here in the binomial, getting either a 6, a 7, or an 8. That's the, uh, the blue areas there. N, that we're given is 16, and the probability for the binomial uh, is 0.55. Remember, a binomial uh, has certain characteristics. Let's uh, bring up the Excel and over here in the corner uh, I've written down the properties of the binomial experiments. There are n independent trials and in this problem the trials were 16. There are two possible outcomes, success or failure. The probability of success is p and we're given that p is equal to 0.55. The probability of failure is q is 1 minus p and I've set up the spreadsheet to calculate that um, equal to 1 minus the value of p, which gives us a q of 0.45. p, the probability, is the same for each trial. That's uh, mandatory. And x is the number of successes that we're interested in. Now, the long formula for the binomial is this formula. And it is equal to n factorial divided by n minus x factorial times x factorial times p raised to the x power times q raised to the n minus x power. And we can calculate that using Excel. Now what I've done over here is set up um, an input area for my data and I've highlighted those in blue. And you just put in, type in, n for 16, P for 0.55, and the first value we're going to solve for is x equals 6. And then I set up the rest of the uh, spreadsheet. This um, solves the, the long binomial formula. I've calculated n minus x, which is just m1 minus n4, n factorial, and there I use the Excel function FACT for factorial, and you just type in FACT and highlight your uh, n value there of 16. And then I got the factorial for n minus x and also the factorial for x. This is raising p to the x power, which is just m2, which is p. Using the caret sign gives us the exponential of m5 which is x again. And then q, n minus x, done similarly. And then p of x, I just wrote or used these values to solve this equation. m6, which is the uh, n factorial divided by m7, which is n minus 1 times x factorial times p to the x times q to the x and we get a value of 0 0.07547861 and I just showed 
all the decimal places that X is calculating uh, in order for you to see that it's uh, pretty consistent. Now the second way of doing it is using the binomial distribution function in Excel and it asks for X which is 6, M1 which is N, the number of trials, M2 which is the probability, and then false. Uh, when you're using the binomial distribution function you either have to put in the or cumulative which will give you everything from negative infinity up through your number or just the specific value. In this case that's what we want so we use false and that gives us an identical value for the probability of uh, P of X. And in the problem at hand we need to know the probability of 6 which is uh, I showed you a shorthand here. If you're just entering specific values, you can just type that in there, 6, and then use the same input for the uh, n value, the p value, and the fact that you want the uh, probability distribution function of value of false, false. And you get each of those values, and we get the probability of 6 plus 7 plus 8 is equal to 0.3885, which is the answer that my stat lab. Now just to show you here in, in reusing the spreadsheet I want to go back and put in 7 and you can see that we get 0.13179 same answers there and if I put in 8 and recalculate we get the 0.18121 same, same answer so you can reuse that spreadsheet and just calculate three times and then sum those up or you can do it the way I did here. Okay, let's look at the normal approximation. And in this case, we've got to check some things. We have to check is n times p greater than 5 and is n times q greater than 5. If both are true, then the binomial random variable that we're looking at in this problem is approximately normally distributed, has a mean of mu is equal to n times p and a standard deviation sigma equal to the square root of n times p times q. And I have just restated the, the properties of binomials. Let's go over here in my input area. n was 16, number of trials, probability is 0.55. And it calculates my q. And I, this little section here I actually uh, borrowed from one of my uh, students, most of this area here, I, I changed a few things, and um, the student had produced a, a, a spreadsheet. I don't want to use his name in case he didn't want me to identify him, but he did an excellent job of coming up with a way to uh, uh, streamline some of his calculations there. And uh, I, I made some minor modifications to it in this area, but I use his general format. And one of the things um, this set up, he's just got using the uh, Excel to use an if statement there. If S2 times S3 greater than 5, and that's N times P, I'm sorry, N times P, I'm sorry, is greater than 5, which it is, we get a yes. Is N times Q greater than 5, we calculate that, and we also get a yes. Can we use a normal? If both of these are true, we get a yes answer. And then his uh, spreadsheet calculates the mean, which is n times p. n times p is 8.8, .8, round it off. And the standard deviation is the square root of n times p times q, which is 1.990. And I've rounded it off again. Now those are the values that my stat lab comes up with too. Now let's look back over here for a second to something that, that this student included. I don't know if he created this himself or if he found it somewhere, but I, I'm going to reuse it. And it is similar to what I used in one of my other videos talking about how to set up hypothesis tests. If you're asked in the binomial exactly C, and C would be 
uh, a, a value that we're considering. Then the normal approximation is equal to that value C minus 0.5. Our value X that we're interested in is less, is greater than that. And then C plus 0.5 uh, is greater than X. In other words, it, the note is it includes C if it's, the wording is exactly C. At most C, X is less than C plus 0.5. So we're on the, the right side of that uh, plus or minus 0.5 that the uh, uh, approximation uses. Fewer than, we're on the lower side of that plus or minus 0.5. At least, we're on the upper side, it includes C. More than C, it does not include C. It, it goes from that uh, plus 0.5 out to right infinity. So those are some things to keep in mind when you're asked these questions. Looking at this spreadsheet a little more closely here, we have an area where we can enter in the exact value that we're interested in the number of successes, which is six and we apply the continuity correction for exactly six and that goes from minus 0.5 lower that would give us 5.5 to plus 0.5 which would be 6.5 for our x1 and x2 the way I've set this up and we calculate the z value for each of those x's and there we're using the the uh, basic formula, the normal distribution formula, z is equal to x minus mu, the mean, divided by sigma. And that's all I've done there is just to uh, calculate the z for x1 and the z for x2. And once I have those values, I can use the Excel norm s distribution function um, for that z value and we use true because we want the cumulative which is the area under the normal curve from negative infinity all the way to that value of 5.5 and we get a p or an area equal to 0.0486 doing the same thing for the x2 of 6.5 we get a probability of 0.1239. And we want the area just from 5.5 to 6.5, so we need to subtract those two values, and we get a probability of 0 0.0753 for exactly 6 using the normal approximation. And just so we rem recall, when we did the binomial long equation, we got a value of 0.0754. So just for estimating the exact value of 6, the normal approximation is very close to the binomial. All right. Now, but in our problem, we want to uh, solve for the probability of x1, which would be 6 up to 8, and using the normal approximation, we have to subtract 0.5 to be inclusive of 6. And we have to add 0.5 to be inclusive of 8. And the way uh, this spreadsheet up, if I enter 9, and we want to be less than that, so that gives us a value of 8.5 for our um, x2. And similarly, using the normal uh, equation x minus mu sigma I get a negative 1.65831 for z for at least 6 and using my norm s distribution formula again I get a p-value of 0 0.0486 for my 8 value we go up to 8.5 I get my z using the same formula and using the norm s distribution uh, formula function again, I get 0 0.4401. And thus the range that we want from 5.5 to 8.5, that 
area, and that probability is just the difference between those two, 0 0.4401 minus 0 0.0486, and that gives us a p-value of 0 0.3915. Now, here's where some of the uh, students have, are troubled because my stat lab gives an answer of 0 0.3919, and uh, even though I go back and review quizzes and, and, and homework to give credit, um, they want to know why that difference. And the reason is that in the uh, my stat lab, uh, they rounded off the Z value to minus 1.66, and if you use the XL norm S disk, the old uh, equation there, to calculate the probability of exactly minus 1.66, you get 0 0.0484 of all those decimals. And then the, uh, my stat lab used exactly minus 0.15, and that gives you 0 0.04 and all those decimals. And if you subtract those two numbers, you get the my stat lab of 0.3919. My point being is that even though uh, you might be uh, concerned that you didn't get exactly what my stat lab says, it's just because they usually have rounded off someplace in the intermediate calculations, whereas on a typical Excel spreadsheet that we set up, we uh, don't round and we carry the decimals through, so we'll get a little bit of a different value there. But again, you know, when I review the quizzes and exams, uh, I would, of course, give credit for the 0 0.3915, even though my stat lab initially does not. Okay, I want to show you how to solve this problem using StatCrunch. And remember, in my Stat Lab, you can usually find a link that will open up StatCrunch. And if you don't happen to have a link, say it's a, uh, for some reason the link's not there, you can always go to StatCrunch.com, sign in using your my Stat Lab information, and open up StatCrunch. Okay, once we have StatCrunch open, to uh, we'll solve it using a binomial calculator. Remember, that's just stat calculators binomial. And uh, I'll just open up a fresh one there, just so you'll see that. Okay, on this problem, n was equal to 16, p is 0.55, and we want to use the between option for the calculator. And in this case, the lower value is 6, the upper value is 8, hit compute, and we get 0.3884. If you remember, when we did the exact calculation using Excel, we got 0.3385, which is the same answer we will get here if we round this off. So that's how fast StatCrunch will do this. Okay, we're going to do it this time using the normal calculator and we bring up this dialog box. Remember our mean was 8.8, .8. our standard deviation is 1.9900, and we want the between tool. Our low end, remember, was, because we're using a normal approximation, 5.5, and our upper end, remember, was 8.5. We click on Compute, and we get 0.3915, which is, recall, exactly what we got using Excel with the exact number of decimal places and that compared favorably with the MyStat Lab value of 3919. So consider uh, StatCrunch uh, once you understand the, the basic normal distribution. And again, one of the things I like about StatCrunch is it draws this sketch for you, shows you that we're going from 5.5 to 8.5, where that fits on the normal distribution with our mean of 8.8, .8, and the area under the curve is 0.3915, or approximately the same answer as 3919. Hope this helps.